Hey everyone, this is Elephant. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the brand new Creative Extensions pack just released by Ableton. It's a totally free pack, but you will need Ableton Live 10 suite with Macs for Live, seeing as these are all Macs for Live devices. That being said, now that Macs is built directly into Live 10, they really just feel like native Ableton devices. There are eight devices in total, six of which are completely new, and two of which are some pretty nice updates to some older devices. I'm not going to give you a detailed walkthrough of each device, I'm going to rather take a look at some creative ways you can apply these new devices in your production. I've already got a set that I'm working on loaded up, and I've added the devices to some of the tracks, so let's take a look at them. The first device I want to look at is called Melodic Steps. This is just a simple melodic step sequencer, although it's quite versatile in terms of the patterns you can create. It's got five independent sequences for octave, transpose, note length, velocity, and the chance that a note will trigger. So you can use it to set up some fairly simple melodic sequences like this. I'm personally not really a fan of using step sequences to create simple repeating patterns because it's just much easier to do this with the piano roll. However, where melodic steps gets interesting is that you can set independent lengths for each sequence, which means that you can create some interesting non-repetitive patterns by setting the different sequences to different lengths. And you can use the dice controls to randomize each sequence. Using these two things, you can get some pretty interesting results. So the first four sequences on melodic steps are fairly self-explanatory, but the chance sequence is probably the most interesting element. This defines the likelihood that a note will trigger, which means that even when you have all the other sequences set to regular amounts, you can get interesting patterns by setting the chance so that the note won't necessarily trigger every time. Where this is particularly interesting is using the melodic steps with drums. Here I've set up a basic drum pattern, and I've put melodic steps on the hi-hat. Here's the pattern without the hats first. So it's a fairly static pattern. I'll re-enable the melodic steps. You'll see that the octave, transpose, and length controls are all constant, seeing as they're not useful for drums. What I do have set up is a velocity sequence that's only 13 beats long, so it'll create an interesting polyrhythm against the main beat. Most of the chance sequence is set to less than 100%, so the notes won't always trigger. So now I get this sequenced hi-hat pattern that almost feels like it's being played live. So even though the main elements of the beat are constant, the feel of the hi-hat really makes the beat feel a lot more alive. You could of course use this on any rhythmic element, but I find it works really well with things like hi-hats and shakers. Over at the end of the drum chain, we have the next new device, the color limiter. The color limiter works like a regular limiter to boost the loudness of whatever you feed through it. But unlike the limiter you might use in a mastering chain, the color limiter intentionally colors the sound, and it sounds fantastic. I'll toggle this on and off so you can hear the effect it's having. So you'll immediately hear that this is boosting the level quite a bit. Generally though, when A being a dynamics processor like a limiter, you don't want to be fooled by the boost in volume. So it's important to match the peaks of the sound before and after to get an accurate picture of the effect. I've added this utility device and mapped a macro to toggle the two devices on and off so we can get a level matched comparison of the before and after. So here's the sound without the limiter. And here's the sound with. The loudness and ceiling controls work in much the same way as they would in a regular limiter, but we also have this saturation section to dial in some warm analog saturation.
and you can adjust the color of the saturation from dark to bright. So you can hear that the color limiter has a great gluing compression and fattens up these drums really nicely. The next device I want to look at is called Pitch Hack. I'm not really sure exactly what to call this one because it does quite a lot, so I'll just show you instead. The main focus of the device is the pitch control in the center. This pitch shifts the incoming audio, almost in real time, but not quite. You'll see what I mean. I'll set the pitch to plus 12 semitones so we get an octave, and then start to turn up the dry wet. So you'll hear that it pitch shifts the audio, but it sounds like the audio is being repeated like a delay. The rate of these repeats is controlled by the rate control. The recycle control functions like a feedback control and feeds the pitch signal back into itself so that the pitch keeps increasing with every repeat. So you can get some nice sounding textural elements from this. You can use the reverse control to define the percentage chance that the repeats will be reversed. If you set the pitch to zero, the repeat control to 100% and the mix to 100%, you can almost get a real time reversing effect. This sounds pretty cool on the drums. What I've also discovered is that when you set both the reverse and the recycle to the max, the pitch hack functions like a glitched up looper. For now, I'll leave the pitch at zero. I'll set the reverse, recycle, and dry wet to the max. Now I'll play some notes into the device. The pitch hacker grabs the notes and starts repeating them. I can play new notes and they get added to the loop. I can use the rate control to tweak the length of the loop. I'll set the recycle to zero to kill the repeats. And just capture another loop. Once I've got a loop going, I can even adjust the pitch control and re-pitch the loop on the fly. So every time I re-pitch the loop, it adds some new artifacts. You can get some pretty interesting results from this, which you could then resample for some fun sound design. And this works really well with all sorts of different sounds. I had quite a bit of fun playing with this and ended up resampling a chord part to use in this track. Now that I've got some drums and some chords going, I want to head over to the next track, the auto solo. Here I'm using the Melodic Steps device again, and I've set this up to really show the full scope of what you can do with the Melodic Steps device. If we take a look at the sequences, you'll see that each one is set to a different length for maximum polyrhythmic effect. I'm sending it through a scale device to map the notes to E minor pentatonic to fit with my chords, and then into a keyboard instrument. 
When I trigger this, you'll hear that all the polyrhythmic elements of the melodic steps add together to create an endless automatic keyboard solo that works really well for the vibe of this track. So between the hi-hats and the key solo, the melodic steps is really bringing a great live feel to this track. To make this keyboard sound a little bit more interesting, I've set up a send using another new device. Here we have the gated delay. The gated delay is fairly simple. You have everything you'd expect from a delay effect, but the unique element here is that the delay is triggered by the gate sequencer that follows the session's playback. Below the gate sequencer is the reverse sequencer, which causes that segment of the delay to be reversed. Also quite interesting is the random control, which randomizes the delay time every time it's triggered. So you'll hear that every time the sequence hits one of the delay steps, the delay is triggered. Here I've set up two separate delays for the left and right with different sequence lengths to make this quite interesting. I've also stuck the pitch hack at the input of the delay so that the delays are an octave above the input signal. This adds a nice textural element to the track as well as some width from the separate delays. To round this track out, I've added in a synth bass from the updated bass device. Bass is a monophonic bass synth, which already existed previously in the Max for Live Essentials pack, but the interface has been updated to fit the Live 10 style, and the layout has been refined quite nicely. It also sounds awesome, it's really fat and analog. So there are only two more devices that I want to cover, which we'll find over on the pad track. First, we have the new Poly device, a simple polyphonic synth, which was also available previously in the Max for Live Essentials pack, but has had a really nice update to the interface and now even features a modulation matrix similar to the one in Wavetable. Poly also sounds great. Just like bass, it's got a really characterful analog sound. I particularly love the three chorus options. This is running through the last new device, Spectral Blur. This does exactly what the name says. It blurs the frequency spectrum of whatever you feed through it. So it's great for creating massive drones and pads. I've stuck an auto pan at the end of the chain to create a pumping effect. At subtler amounts, the spectral blur also works really well as a basic reverb, like I've set up over here on the auto solo track.
There's one last device which I didn't have time to get to in this video called the Re-Enveloper. Re-Enveloper is a multi-band envelope processor. It divides the signal into three separate bands with adjustable crossover points, and for each band, the envelope of the signal can be compressed or expanded. It works really nicely to emphasize certain elements in a signal, for example, tightening up specific drums in a full drum kit, or bringing out the mid-range pluck of a bass guitar. So those are just a handful of the things you can do with the creative extensions. As the name suggests, these devices are really interesting creative tools, and each device actually does quite a bit more than you'd first expect. So I'd really encourage you to spend a bit of time experimenting with each one to really see what it's capable of. The Creative Extensions Pack is completely free, so if you've got Live 10 Suite, there really is no excuse not to download these. I'll include a link in the description of the video. As always, thanks so much for watching. If you want to check out more videos, head to my website at elephant.co.za. There, you'll also find a bunch of live packs to download, many of which are free. If you like what I do and want to support, the best way to do that is to buy one of the paid packs. That way, everyone wins. You get cool new Ableton instruments and effects, and I get to keep making them. I'll include links to all of these in the description. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon with another video. Cheers.